if I'm doing my math right, that extrapolates out to about 460 miles at 100%, which right off the bat is a lot less concerning than 300 would have been. Um, now Ford's not gonna tell me 460 miles, but that's what I found. Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are diving into the Ford F-150 Lightning's recently leaked uh, numbers for the uh, miles per gallon equivalent or MPGE, uh, the EPA estimated range. And just as a quick preview, I want to talk about one, well, how does it stack up to some popular EVs, like specifically like a Tesla Model Y, uh, the efficiency numbers, we can take a look at that, the Rivian, we could talk about that too. And then the second thing that we're going to dive into is, if you recall, there was all this talk going around about how Ford was estimating these numbers. So, so a uh, quick preview. These numbers are really close to what Ford was saying. So, like almost exactly the numbers that Ford predicted is what we're seeing on the EPA numbers. However, those numbers prior, Ford was saying were estimated with a thousand pounds of cargo in the vehicle. Y well, I'll save it for when we get into it, but it seems like, well, it might not be the case. So, let's dive into that and I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to break down the window stickers that have been released and uh, kind of go through what the equivalents are. Again, we're going off miles per gallon equivalent is what these numbers mean. And then there's also a third number in here, which I, I think is the most important one, the kilowatt hours used per 100 mile range. And so this is 100 miles, and that's how you get like a pure number. Now, we'll start with the regular battery. Now, this is the uh, battery that's coming on the Pro that's consumer can purchase. Uh, it's also the one that uh, will come on the XLT at the lowest tier, and then that's it. <laughs> so if we remember, the size of this battery is 98 kilowatt hours, and the range that we're getting is 230 miles uh, of range, which is okay. Honestly, being an EV driver for the last couple months, I've noticed that Day-to-day -day life, you really don't need more than, I would say, honestly, 150 miles, maybe 200. And I, I, I go to my office, which is, oh, it's a good 15, 20-minute drive, about 20 miles away, maybe 15 miles away. And uh, I might have to run errands after work or whatever. Like, on a busy day, I'm really not ever going over maybe like 60 or 70 miles, so knowing that that like i double that so like for a crazy day you would maybe need 150 miles so realistically 230 is probably going to be fine for most people now where it gets tricky are the people who are using this for like work like your work truck not driving to an office and you're actually driving around all day and even those guys i'm guessing are probably you know, hitting the 200 mile mark roughly. So I, I, what I'm trying to say is this 230 may seem small ish in the scope of some other popular EVs. It really actually is probably going to be flexible for most people. Now, again, really heavy users of, uh, their vehicle, especially if you're towing and you're using this for work and you're loading it down, it might be harder to make this 230 work for you. So it's something to really consider and try to like, you know, planning out before you purchase this vehicle because these miles could go either way. And, and, and that's just worth thinking about. So the, the, as, as we go on, the, the city mile, uh, MPGE is rated at 76 and we have the highway MPGE is at 61. And then the, the number I like to look at again is the, 49 kilowatt per hours in the 100 miles. So now let's bump into the extended battery. So this is the one that's rated at 131 kilowatt per hour in the size, and we're expected to get 320 miles of range, which is great. That is really good for such a big truck. And uh, it's especially good because earlier, I know I've said it a lot, like why was it worth upgrading to the bigger battery? Like, yes, you get the Ford home charging kit and all of that stuff when you upgrade to the extended battery. But to me, it was never worth it when they only estimated an extra like 70 miles, I think it was, more than the standard battery. Now, knowing that you're getting a 90, close to 100 miles more, it seems a little more justifiable. You could do a lot more with that extra 90 miles. I think it, 
it's tough to say like they're really close to each other like at the same time so it's hard to justify the purchase in a lot of ways too so i still could see it going either way again i think the base battery is actually going to be fine for someone like me but and then the city numbers uh mpge is 78 highway is going to be 63 and then the kilowatt per hundred miles is 48 and now it's interesting here is even with the bigger weight here the efficiency actually gets a slightly bit better which is pretty cool to see uh it might just be the the bigger battery doing the work here but you'd think with the more weight the kilowatt out per hours over 100 miles is actually going to go up a little bit compared to the regular battery so it could just be some of the extra cooling features or, or some other things that they're doing to help with that and it's only one kilowatt per hour that we're talking about here but it is interesting to see and moving right along the platinum now this is the one that has the bigger wheels therefore even though it has the same and it's a little heavier uh even though it has the same exact battery as the extended range in the lariat and the xlt uh, or the of course the pro if you buy it for your uh fleet now this one actually loses some efficiency because of the bigger tires and some other things, which uh, is actually enough to lose about 20 miles per uh, your range. So you'd go from 320 to it says 300, and now it's the same battery size. It is a 331 kilowatt hour battery. You have the 30. Here's where you start to see the numbers where you're losing efficiency. You're going from 78 to then 73 in the city. You're going from 63 to 60 on the highway and then you're going your your per 100 miles you're going from 48 uh, up to 51 kilowatt per hour is used over 100 miles so thinking about the platinum i i really struggle to believe if it was worth it in my opinion i don't know if you get that much more than you do in the lariat the lariat extended stacking them up there's about a 10k difference and maybe you really like the the bigger tires look or, or or some of the extra interior features like you get a little bit nicer seats i believe but honestly you're losing 20 miles to upgrade it seems like a little counterintuitive almost i really think the value and i think ford knows this too comes in at that ex laria extended battery as far as getting all the premium features all the tech a decent looking truck that looks pretty badass and the range to match it like that is go it's a it's a it's a perfect vehicle in a lot of ways and the platinum is for the guy who just wants the the, the biggest and baddest and just hey this is yeah this is cream of the crop i don't care about my mileage i just want a badass looking truck now the the biggest thing i wanted to talk about today is uh, let me take you back so first of all i don't want to do it i told you so dance but i'm going to so <laughs> There's been so many, whenever I bring up the Ford estimated range, I've always gone by that. And so many people would be like, yeah, but haven't you seen everyone's video where they said it's actually rated with a thousand pounds in the, in the car or in the truck? And I've said, yeah, that's, that's what people have said. That's what we've seen from a couple people, but never officially from Ford. If you look at Ford's website, it never says it anywhere that it, they were doing that with the thousand pounds. It was just the people who were dropping it off at YouTubers houses to review, uh, somehow this got into their marketing and they started saying it. They said it at a couple, uh, auto shows as well. Uh, but it was never official that the Ford estimated range included a thousand pounds of payload. It, it just, I, I think it gained popularity in MKBHD's video. That's where I first heard it. And he saw that, Hey, the, the mileage on here actually looks like it's in the four hundreds. And his answer to that was because of the thousand pound payload. And it turns out, and I, I was really kind of hoping I'd be wrong on this for the record. And I think a lot of people were, <laughs> but it, it just isn't the case. And I still see a lot of people on the forum saying uh, it still could be more. And unfortunately, I don't think it is. I, I went as far as to ask someone who works with this stuff. So a guy who um, he doesn't want his name mentioned. I'm going to pull up his exact text message. So, But he does work for the big three. He does efficiency work uh, there. And he says, all manufacturers test at what the EPA calls equivalent test weight or ETW. Uh, short answer is that ETW does not have any additional payload outside of its standard options on a vehicle. This is the highest level explanation without making it confusing. I appreciate that. So 
basically what that means is that these are those numbers without the thousand pounds, whether we like the numbers or not. And again, the, the higher trims were more, right? So that was good to see. So the fact that the, so we saw that they were ranging roughly, you know, 280 for the platinum and then 300 miles on the Lariat extended XLT extended. And we got a little bit more on there. We got to 320 and 300. So we did see an increase. So maybe there was some truth to that and that, that we're, we're testing. The only thing that makes me think something's up here is they we didn't get any extended in the base battery. So kind of interesting. I don't know what happened there, but it's safe to say, I mean, unless a miracle happens, that these are the numbers and we should we should not be expecting anything higher than that. Uh, to sum it all up, though, is please don't still think there's going to be a miracle of getting more range than what you see here. This is a really heavy truck. And the fact that it's getting these numbers, it adds up and it adds up to where it should be here. Kind of always knew that it was just not going to happen. Mostly my, my argument actually wasn't this reason. I didn't think that the thousand pound thing wasn't true. I thought it was more of like on like the software end that they were still getting the kinks out. Again, these videos and stuff where we first saw this was like almost a whole year ago at this point and the software was probably changed 60 times since then and will be changed another 60 times before they actually are ending up in our driveways. So for that reason, it is just safe to say that even the estimates they saw on the screen probably weren't there or accounting for everything. So all of those moving pieces just leads to, hey, we have this safe number of about 230, 300, and 320, and that's what it's going to be. Now, if I end up being wrong on this, this is something I'm happy to be wrong about just because it, it's better for everyone <laughs> because we get more mileage, right? So uh, again, I don't mind being wrong, but the sad reality is I'm probably right. Okay, so the the two vehicles I wanted to compare this to here, I, I mentioned earlier, is something like the Model Y. Um, and I mostly wanted to bring this up because just talking about efficiency overall. So just so we can like understand like the amount of weight that this uh, lightning has and, and how much work it has to do, how big the batteries are. So something like the Model Y, which is technically an SUV, it's a pretty big vehicle. Now this, the all, all wheel drive long range, like the most common one you see, it gets about two or we'll, we'll go by the, um, this will do 28 kilowatt per hours over that hundred miles that we talked about earlier. So remember that 28. So then when we move to, we'll just go to the, the average, the, the middle of the road lightning, and this one's getting 48. So tw tw like almost double. That's, that's a big difference. Just like this truck and why I think trucks and SUVs are so hard to crack into the EV space, it has to do double the amount of efficiency. Like that's why the batteries have to be so big too. The battery on the Model Y is almost half the size <laughs> as, the, as the Lightning as well for that reason. So it just has that much more work to do and it has to be capable too. So first of all, it has to be bigger just to account for its own weight. But then it's got to be efficient and be able to haul. It's got to be able to have payload. Like a truck is no easy feat. So we're going to see, I don't know, it's almost wild the fact that we uh, we as a, a vehicle society went from midsize SUVs to trucks. And we totally skipped larger SUVs when that's probably should have been the next logical step and then grow into something like a truck. But everyone saw the opportunity. That's why we're in the truck race right now. Um a little off topic, but it's interesting to compare. And uh, speaking of, we should talk about Rivian, right? So Rivian's numbers, actually really not much to talk about other than the fact that they're basically the same. Uh, I think there uh, there's a difference of one or two uh, miles per gallon if equivalent. And really, it's not worth diving into. A lot of people are saying it's a win for Rivian, when it's a smaller vehicle, I think it's just to be expected. They, they, it, can't, it comes out even is what I'm trying to say. So it just all sums up to this truck game is hard. <laughs> it, it's a, the feat that we're about to realize right now, why it's such a crazy thing, is what they've been able to do with range and efficiency for trucks. So let's just hope that it they can continue to improve and we see... Uh, uh, before I keep rambling on... 
I really think what I'm seeing and noticing is we're we're gonna see something really cool. I think at that two 2025 refresh of the lighting, as cool and great as this one already is, I'm obviously still on board. Something tells me that refresh that we get in well at this point only three years now. It's going to have a lot of improvements that, that we're going to be excited to see. So it's going to be a really cool time, and I can't wait for that. So before I keep rambling, I should just end the video here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on this. Were you expecting more? Do you think maybe we'll still see some extra range? Uh, I don't I don't think we will, but you never know. Uh, let me know your thoughts. So I will leave it here, and thank you guys. Bye.